Hello everyone and welcome to Theta Sigma's Doctor Who podcast number 24. In this week's show we have feedback, the great USA First discussion, and the master as played by Eric Roberts. Come here you scrumptious little beauty. A box? Doctor, what is it? I've got mail. This week we have feedback on several issues, but firstly to that concerning last week's podcast on the 7th Doctor, Sylvester McCoy. James Morell said, Well done, you've made me like the 7th Doctor just a little more, and I'm thinking of having a 7th Doctor marathon tomorrow, as it's my day off work. Thanks for that James, and I hope you enjoyed your Doctor Who marathon. As I responded on the post, in hindsight there is a lot to like about the 7th Doctor. And for those of you who are not regular Big Finish audio listeners, let me highly recommend the 7th Doctor audios to you. In answer to my question about your favourite McCoy era story, Daniel, over at the Facebook page Doctor Who 2, said, The greatest show in the galaxy. It's definitely quirky, with tons of oddball characters and moments. But rather than define the story as can happen sometimes, this accentuates a fine story full of suspense, menace and surprise. That's a tough act to get right, in a circus tent or not. Thanks for those observations, Daniel. And again, as I said on the post, I've recently re-watched that story myself and have to completely agree with the comments about suspense and menace. I agree with you from the first, but now I think you're utterly mistaken. Now on to something that's evoked a sizeable response from British fans over the last week or so, and that's the release of the 50th anniversary trailer at San Diego Comic-Con. A number of British fans, myself amongst them, have voiced their displeasure at the BBC for letting them down over not only this, but also other issues relating to celebrating the show's 50th anniversary. And when I posted my comments on the Facebook page, I've had some very interesting feedback on the issue. Tracy McCoo, and I hope I've pronounced that properly, Tracy, said... As an American fan who only just started watching the show under Eccleston, I can't help but agree with the outrage of the British fans. All I can think is, if there were an ER, or Friends, or MASH 50th anniversary, and it was teased in the UK before here, I'd be upset. Much as I love it, Doctor Who belongs to the UK. No amount of Comic-Con hype will change that. I'm grateful for the show, but I know it's not mine, not really and the showrunners have shown so little respect to their home fans, and that really upsets me. Kerin Gedge said, I'm in New Zealand, and I think the UK should get it first. Douglas J. Harkins commented this, I know I don't pay BBC TV licence, but overseas fans do feed money into the broadcasting machine. I personally have purchased just about every classic Doctor Who available, which is no small amount of money. I pay for Netflix to see the other newer episodes. Others pay for BBC America. There is no free means of watching Doctor Who over here. Foreign fans do bring in more money. Having a show which is successful outside of England is a good thing for the revenue. Thanks for all of those comments. I appreciate it's a very emotive issue. Now it would be fair to say that this issue has had fans kicking off all over the place and I completely understand why. Over the years, and I'm told similar things happened when JNT was producing back in the 1980s, this issue has come up time and again. And while I appreciate the BBC wanting to break the overseas market, to do it to the detriment of the British fans, most of whom have been fans since the show started, and without whose support the show would not have survived as long as it has, is simply wrong. Understand here, people, that I'm not in any way, shape or form having a pop at the American fans at all. Guys, it's not your fault. My rant is against the BBC and its pure and simple disrespect for the home fans in terms of the 50th anniversary celebrations. And now on to the main topic for this week's show. Eric Anthony Roberts was born April 18th, 1956. His career began with King of the Gypsies in 1978, earning a Golden Globe nomination for Best Actor debut. He starred as the protagonist in the 1980 dramatisation of Willa Carthur's 1905 short story, Paul's Case. He earned both a Golden Globe and Academy Award nomination for his supporting role in Runaway Train in 1985. Through the 1990s and 2000s, he maintained dramatic film and TV movie roles while appearing in TV series. 
His TV work includes three seasons with sitcom Less Than Perfect and a recurring role on the NBC drama Heroes. His sisters Julia Roberts and Lisa Roberts Gillen and daughter Emma Roberts are also actors. Roberts was born in Mississippi. His parents, Betty Lou and Walter Grady Roberts, one-time actors and playwrights, met while performing theatrical productions for the armed forces. They later co-founded the Atlanta Actors and Writers Workshop in Atlanta, Georgia, off Juniper Street in Midtown. Robert's mother filed for divorce in 1971 and it was finalised in early 1972. His younger siblings, Julia Roberts and Lisa Roberts Gillen, are also actors. His mother married Michael Motes and had daughter Nancy Motes in 1976. Roberts is of English, Scottish, Irish, Welsh, German and Swedish descent and was raised in Atlanta where he attended Grady High School. In 1996 he appeared in the Doctor Who television film in the role of the fourth master, although whether it is actually the fourth master or not is up for debate. As of 2011 he is the only American actor to play the role. When SFX listed previous masters in Doctor Who, the magazine said of Roberts, outacted by a CGI snake in the same production. In a darkly comic touch, the on-screen wife of Robert's human character, who's killed by her newly possessed husband, who's taken over by the master in the form of the uh, previously mentioned CGI snake, is played by his real-life wife. Many fans have said that Robert's turn in the role of the master was either too camp or too pantomime. When I first saw the film on the night of broadcast here in the UK, I will openly admit that I was not a fan of the Robert's master. Up until that time, though, I had viewed Anthony Ainley's master as pantomime, and in my humble opinion, Eric Roberts' master made Ainley look positively Delgado-esque. I threw this question open on the Facebook page, and here are some of the responses I've received. John Wright described Roberts' master as simply over the top. He went on to say it was too Americanized the whole film. I love McCoy at the start of the film, class as always, but Eric Roberts was way over the top and he really didn't need to be. The Doctor Who Fantastics group page said this, He was a great master and no rubbish beard either. Will Reeves makes a very interesting point when he says, I think he was very American, especially since Roberts was to be possessed by the master's essence and not an actual regeneration. Facebook page Doctor Who 2 said, I think Roberts did a good job. He was good and nice as Bruce. Actually, I think good and nice Bruce might have been the hardest part of this performance for Roberts to get right. And he was menacing as the master. His double act with Lee was quite good, and his deadpan black humour was effective. Things got a bit hokey when the master donned his Time Lord robes, but the robes weren't the only hokiness on display at that point. I'm not a fan of the snake essence, but I thought Roberts did a great job. And that's all for this week. As always, thanks for your feedback and thanks for listening. If you have any comments at all on the podcast, please do leave them on the post here or inbox me on the Facebook page, Theta Sigma's Doctor Who page. You can email me at respectthething at outlook.com. That's R-E-S-P-E-C-T-T-H-E-T-H-I-N-G at outlook.com. Or you can tweet me at Theta Sigma 12. Oh yes, and keep your eyes open on the Twitter account as I'll be mixing up the content between that account and this Facebook page over the coming weeks. In the next show, we'll be looking at the recordings of Big Finish 5th Doctor releases Eldrad Must Die, The Lady of Mercia, and The Prisoners of Fate, before then starting a mini-series looking at the characters from the crowded TARDIS as featured in these audios. So until then... Well, goodbye, my boy. You did quite well. Quite well? Hmm. It's reassuring to know that my future is in safe hands. Thank you for listening to Theta Sigma's Doctor Who podcast. Doctor Who and its associated shows are all copyright and property of the BBC, and no infringement is intended. 